Violence against women and girls is one of the most widespread human rights violations in the world. Alarmingly, we're talking about one in three of every women and girls subjected to physical and or sexual violence, mostly in the hands of somebody they know, their husbands, their intimate partners. Adolescent girls in particular are prime targets for many forms of violence. This includes in their own homes, sexual harassment in schools, in their extended families, in their communities, basically the places we think of where they should be safest and most protected. Violence against women doesn't have any boundaries, national or economic or class. Um, but it's very important to look at in every country uh, which groups of women and girls might be at especially high risk, right? So, for example, in some countries it might be rural women who are particularly isolated for whom there are no services at all available. Um, in other cases, we're finding uh, studies showing very high levels of sexual violence against adolescent girls outside of the home by strangers. The cost of violence against women and girls is staggering. We're talking about not only the women and girls whose health and lives are traumatically impacted, their children, their families and communities, but the costs extend to national economies and productivity. And the costs of violence against women are very high for our efforts to end AIDS. Violence against women, for example, increases the risks of HIV for women. Imagine negotiating condom use with an abusive partner or husband. Violence against women makes it very hard for women to be able to go seek services and testing, to stay on HIV treatment. And in the case of abuse during pregnancy, for example, the risks are not only to the woman who bears many health consequences, including of HIV, but the risks of her future children being born with HIV. So we've had many years of growing attention, fortunately, to the, the understanding of the impact of violence against women. But we still have a huge blind spot when it comes to tackling violence against women head on in our HIV response. We need to invest, first and foremost, in effective prevention. We need to work with adolescent girls and boys. And we need to put communities at the center so they can lead the transformation against the harmful social norms that perpetuate that violence and abuse. The bottom line is we're not going to get to end AIDS unless we really tackle gender discrimination and end gender-based violence. Despite all the talk and all the policies around gender equality and ending violence and everybody standing up to say they're not for violence against women, the reality and practice is very different. We have very limited investments on getting survivor services across the range, including access to justice to end impunity. Um, we're talking about prevention all the time, and we're talking about prevention of HIV, but nobody's really looking and understanding what's the realities for women and girls in their day-to-day -day lives outside that clinic, outside of the health service, what happens to them?